Hello everybody and welcome back to the third video in the series where we're looking at Bach's Fugue in C minor from Book 1 of Preludes and Fugues. So far in video 1 we've looked at the historical background uh, behind the fugues and we've also then in video 2 we looked at the structure and did a, a, a mini analysis I think of the fugue. So this week, you can see if the presentation is slightly different, you can see the fugue subject. And this week, we're going to be thinking about this from a musicianship point of view and just dig into it a little bit more so we can understand the characteristics behind it. So the first thing that we can do is actually just clap the fugue subject. You can either do this looking at the screen or you can actually do it without looking at all if you want to turn your back on it and see if you can just do it orally. So I'll just play the fugue subject. One, two, three, four, one. Now it's very easy, isn't it, when you've got the music written out there in front of you, just to follow that through. But when you do that, do you ever fully understand what the fugue is made up out of? Well, let's see. So let's next thing I'd like you to do is to clap the rhythm that you can see there. Okay, so I'm going to count us in. I'd like you to clap the rhythm. Ideally, use the met some metrical counting as well so that you're at least counting with one and two and three and four. And see if you can count like that. Are you ready? After four beats one, two, three, four, one. didn't I and it was interesting how on the uh, on the second bar I went three uh, three four one because of course there is our syncopation that we've got so when we consider the structure of that rhythm you can see it's made up out of semiquavers quavers and the single crotchet I'd suggest that right now you just close your eyes and see if you can clap the rhythm again from memory. And as you do it, see if you can picture that rhythm in your head. I'll count you in again. Close your eyes, clap it from memory. One, two, three, four, one. How did it go? What you could do is stop the video now completely, go away and see if you can write down that rhythm. That would be really interesting and it would be quite a curious thing, I think, for you to, to see how far you can get with it. So we can see that there is a rhythmic motif, can't we, in the pattern that comes in on the second quaver. So let's look now at the melodic sense of this. And what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to sing it um, using the degrees of the scale. Now, ideally, I would use solfa, but I appreciate that most of you probably don't, don't have that. So we're going to use the degrees of the scale instead, which works. Um, we're going to have to make a little compromise because we haven't quite got time to sing a sharpened seventh. If you see what I mean, on the, the, the first note C, we really have to sing one sharp seven, one, five, six. I suppose we could do it. We don't have to do it in time, do we? Let's do it like that with a sharp seven and singing it quite slowly. Uh, I'll still count us in and we'll try and keep a bit of rhythm, but don't worry about it if you lose the plot a little bit. So we're going to go three and four and one. One sharp seven, one, five, six. One sharp seven, one, two, five, one sharp seven one two four five six five four one it's a bit low for me down there see what i mean about the sharp seven getting in the way doing that's quite interesting though isn't it because all of a sudden you realize oh yeah one seven one five six one seven one two four five six one seven one 
two, five. Oh, that comes back to a five again. One, seven, one, two, and then it drops down to a four, five, six. Interesting, that goes to the six, and really with the four there as well, I think Bach is outlining not one, not five, but four. That's really interesting. Um, and so let's just have a look at some of those little patterns that Bach is, is, is finding then. Let's do this time these ones to start with. You ready? I'd like you to sing those and I'll play the other bits. One, two, three, four, one. Dun, dun, dun. One, seven, one. One, seven, one. How was that? Okay, let's try the next bit. Ah, oh, let's add these in. And if you look at the squares or the rectangles, you can see the first one goes G, A flat, or five, six. And the second one goes two, five. And the third one, two, four. Hmm. And you, you kind of ask yourself, why didn't Bach on the first one? Why did he go to the A flat rather than to the C? Why did he do it that way around? Or why did, sorry, why did he go to the G rather than the D? I, I think, you know, we can play around with that a little bit, but um, Bach obviously made a decision. But it's interesting, there is a little pattern there. Let's sing it again. Two, three, four, one. One, seven, one, sing. Five, six, one seven one two five one seven one two four five six five four one so the only other bit of that subject to explore is that little bit which as i've already said outlines the chord four that's really quite distinctive isn't it partly because it suddenly moves by step and also because of the syncopation that you've got there. So now let's try another little experiment. Have a look at it, hear it through in your thinking voice, in your internalise it, audiate it, hear it there, and then shut your eyes and see if you can sing it through from memory. So let's audiate, let's internalise it first. So here's um, the beats to come in. Two, three, four, one. So now let's do it again. I'll count you in one more time and this time shut your eyes and see if you can sing it with the degrees of the scale, using the degrees of the scale. Are you ready? Doesn't matter if you go wrong, remember, that tells you something about what you understand and what you don't understand. Here it is again. Two, three, four, sing. How did it go? Did you have your eyes shut? If you didn't, I recommend it. Just pause the video, move away, see if you can do it with your eyes shut. Now, so can you play it from memory? This time, go to your piano, see if you can play that from memory. I'll play it one more time and see if you can play along with me. Ready? Nice and steadily. Two, three, four, one. shall we? Ha ha! Here's the answer. And see if you can work that out by ear. Remember what I said, it's a, it's a, a, a tonal answer because you've got that drop of a fifth at the beginning. See if you can work that out. And just 
out of interest, I think here is the answer and the subject compared. So you can see just that one difference on note four that changes. And then there is your counter subject. You could also see if you could work out that in exactly the same way. You can do this in your own time. You can work out how to make that all work. So thank you so much for watching. I'll be back with you next week. And in the last video in this piece of the month series, we're going to be considering style and interpretation. Bye for now.